So this video is going to be about mutations and protein structure. So mutations are the ultimate source of new genes because they're going to change the sequence of nucleotides in our DNA. So an example of a kind of mutation is point mutations. So that's going to be a change in a single nucleotide pair within a gene. And an example of a condition that can be caused by a point mutation is sickle cell disease. So we can see right here that sickle cell disease results because of a change in a single nucleotide pair within this gene, which is going to result in the substitution of glutamic acid with a valine. And so when we have this valine, it causes um, kind of a malfunction in the hemoglobin protein in our red blood cells, which results in this condition, which we call sickle cell disease. So some small scale mutations. So they can be caused by insertions and deletions. So that would be the addition or the loss of nucleotide pairs that can um, oftentimes result in some pretty disastrous effects. And so the way that it would do that is by causing a frame shift mutation. So if we get a frame shift mutation, then that means that the number of nucleotides that was inserted or removed from this gene was not a multiple of three. Because if uh, we remember, our codons are made up of three nucleotides, so our DNA and our uh, mRNA is really read by groups of three. So if we take out a number of nucleotide pairs that's not multiple of three, then it's going to throw off the organization of the remaining codons and result um, in a different protein um, than what would have been made originally. And so another thing that can cause these mutations uh, are mutagens. So those are going to be physical and chemical agents that can interact with our DNA and cause mutations. So now we'll look at some of the mutations uh, that these can actually cause. So first we'll have a silent mutation. So in a silent mutation, if this new uh, nucleotide pair has no effect on the encoded protein, so we encode the same amino acid as we would have originally, even though we've changed one of the nucleotide pairs, then that's called a silent mutation because it doesn't do anything. There's no visible effect on the phenotype um, of that individual or on the function of that protein. So moving on, if we change a nucleotide pairing and that results in um, the substitution of one amino acid with a different amino acid, then that's called a missense mutation. So in a missense mutation, we have a change of the nucleotide sequence that results in one amino acid being uh, switched out for another one. And so that one, depending on the characteristics of the old amino acid and the new amino acid, could have you know, really disastrous effects on the structure and function of this protein, or it could not matter too much, but that would depend on those two amino acids specifically. So moving on, we have nonsense mutations. So when we have this nucleotide substitution again, we change out one nucleotide for another, in nonsense mutations, that changes this codon into a stop codon instead of um, a codon for another amino acid. And so this can be really disastrous because this stop codon is going to prematurely stop the translation of this protein, so we end up with something called a truncated protein. And so these truncated proteins are uh, more often than not going to be um, unfunctional, so they're not going to work at all. And so a mutation that results in the formation of a new stop codon, so this nonsense mutation, can be really disastrous for a cell. I hope you found this video really helpful. All images, unless otherwise stated, are from Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You can schedule a free one-on-one -on -one 30 minute appointment or you can drop in during uh, any of our normal business hours. For more details, visit www.baylor.edu tutoring.